Okay, so the Battlefield 2042 trailer finally dropped. I thought it was really, really good. It even as an homage to one of my favorite moments just in gaming, the jet to jet takedown. But it also had an unexpected reaction to a problem the game has already, the price tag. Let's talk about Battlefield and then that price issue. Okay, so first things first, just a reminder, all month long, I am raising money for St. Jude Children's Hospital. St. Jude's Children's, St. Jude Children's Hospital is working to cure cancer and other rare childhood diseases. So all month long, I'll be including this link in the pinned comment and in the description so you can donate to the cause. Uh, you can see more information uh, in the link, of course, but some of the goals are $10 will get a kid a toy, $250 will get a family a meal card, and $500 will get a bone marrow transplant treatment. This is a great cause. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be supporting it, and I hope you will too. Thank you to everybody who has supported it thus far. Okay, let's talk about Battlefield. So the 2042 trailer uh, hit, and it, it left the question that I don't think was intentional, and that question was, why are games so bizarrely priced right now? So basically, uh, the PC version is $59.99. <laughs> You know, like what you would expect the game to be priced. The Xbox One version is $59.99 or $53.99 if you have Game Pass. Uh, the Xbox Series X and Series S version is $69.99 or $62.99 with Game Pass. And then the PS5 version is $69.99. There's no discounts on the PS5 whatsoever. You got to have that extra money to play on playing your pretty PS5, I guess. Um, there's been a lot of reactions online lately about how $70 feels prohibitive. And I kind, I'm kind of starting to agree with it more and more. Initially, I was just like, yeah, the value proposition is still there. But it definitely does make gaming just another thing that's harder for more people to get in. You know, I think a lot of us, we buy a lot of games every year, right? I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're probably really in the conversation. But I remember when I was a kid, and I had to save up for a year to buy one video game a year. And that video game was Sonic 2 because I was a cool kid. But anyway, um, yeah, that it took a long time to save up for things. Like I, I had a paper out and everything. And I feel like bumping games up to $70 is just it. It's really hitting the wrong tone. And the reason part of the reason that this reaction is so strong is because this is a multiplayer only game. So. Battlefield 2042, to me, I'm really, really excited about the game. I think it looks great, but a lot of people have been reacting to the price point, the fact that it's multiplayer only, and that it is $70. Like uh, the Returnal developers, for example, finding out that their game was going to be priced at $70 and having no clue that would be the case, uh, <laughs> was it's just an interesting story to read about. So anyway, like... I think it's I think it's too highly priced at 70, honestly, even if it is a multiplayer only game. And even if it is a game I'm excited for the, the $70 price point is a tough pill to swallow. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I think it's odd. I think um, this is why services like Game Pass are blowing up because like the, the most played games are like Apex and Fortnite because they're free. Warzone has a free version, for example, and more and more of those games are popping up as huge revenue drivers. So I think what's happened is the market has changed and the idea of charging $70 for everything, it's not a one size fits all thing. So Battlefield 2042 with this, this $70 price tag, it is going to have a battle pass system also. So like they're trying to double dip. And I think that is why the internet is reacting the way it is. So that's sort of like the controversy surrounding it. Uh, my stance on it is, yeah, I, $70 just feels odd. It felt odd for Returnal also. Phenomenal games. Um, but it, it it still just feels odd. Maybe I'm just getting used to it. Let me know what you think about the price point of $70. Specifically, let's talk about 2042. Because 2042, unless you... Like, the trailer was awesome. I'm excited about the new modes and specialists we're going to get into. But that $70 price feels high. 
So let's talk a little bit about my reaction because I did like it. I like the Levolutions. I like the new weather system, the details we got about specialists, the, the CG teases of the maps we're going to get. Uh, this is great. I love the idea that it's multiplayer only because they can focus on just doing multiplayer to the best of their ability. And that has me really, really excited. Also, it's just like, I don't think people have a problem with it being multiplayer only. Maybe you do if you love the campaign, right? But if, if that price point wasn't also associated with it, I think there would be a little bit more leeway towards the developer. I would rather see a great campaign, not so... <laughs> Man, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't really think about it because when you take out the campaign, that's, that's like a whole avenue. If there was a campaign with it, okay. I feel like $70 is a better price point. But I think like that intermixing of having just multiplayer and the high price point that's what people are coming to terms with. But anyway, some of the some of the features. So I loved it. I love that that shot of the jet to jet moment. That was a lot of fun. Um, I love what we saw of the weather system or the teases, the levolutions, as they used to be called back in the day. Uh, some of the things that we learned are there are going to be three gameplay pillars. And initially I read the PlayStation blog to get details about like what's happening in the game. Uh, it was written really weird. It was really hard for me to follow. So I just went to the EA website and it was much clearer about what you get. So you get all out where warfare, which has conquest and breakthrough. Uh, just so you know, you can have AI squad mates if you choose to, or uh, you can just fight AI basically and still level up your character. So if you want to practice before you go online, that is nice. There's also a hazard zone. Uh, that is the other mode, which is a modern take on multiplayer. That's a high stakes squad based game type. That's from the PlayStation blog. It's not a battle royale mode. They were extra clear <laughs> that it is not a battle royale mode. And there is a redacted mode on July 22nd. Uh, Xbox also tweeted that there will be more about the game during the Xbox games showcase. So uh, some of the, the levolutions were tornadoes were brought up. And the rocket launch, those are some of the things that we got to see. Uh, it's going to support the biggest maps in the series to date. On the PS5 and Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, 128 players, destructive real-time weather, wingsuit specialist. And on the, the older consoles, you're going to get 64 players and smaller maps that are sort of curtailed to be on running on those systems. So some of the maps included uh, Kaleidoscope, that was the skyscraper area. Manifest, that was the shipyard map. Uh, Orbital was the rocket taking off map. Discarded was the ship graveyard. Renewal was the desert sort of Egypt map. Hourglass, it's like red sands. There's a stadium that's sort of buried in the sand. That one looked neat. And Breakaway was the snow-covered mountain maps. There's going to be 10 specialists at launch. Uh, specialists each get a specialty and trait. Grappling Hook was given an example, or Recon Drone, uh, Siret Health Pistol, so you can heal your teammates. So some of the, the Battlefield staples are going to be there. And then, uh, yeah, Battlefield being multiplayer only. I think it's smart. I would, I, like I said, I think it should be $10 cheaper. I think if it was $10 cheaper just across the board, I, I just feel like that is where it should be at the highest price point, right? Um, yeah, man, it's just really weird. I, I can't wait to read your comments on this one tomorrow because I'm really torn on it. Like, I understand developers are like, hey, we need to make money on our game, so it's $70. But the fact that this is a multiplayer-only game, like, what if Fortnite had come out? Well, that's a bad example because it did come out with a price. What if Apex came out and they're like, it's $70 and you have to pay for the Battle Pass, right? Is Battlefield saying that it's it's going to be better than Apex because you have to pay this entry fee already? It's really, really interesting. I'm surprised by it because it's sort of... The, the game looks awesome. I'm excited to play it. But this price point thing is just something that I'm I'm going to grapple with. It's, it's definitely one where I would say, wait, read the reviews, watch your favorite streamer or whatever, hear what they think, and then make your decision to purchase it. But then there's that fear of missing out. Like the game's going to go gold at this price point. And, th and that's the problem with these things. Games have been raised to $70. Everybody's going to buy it anyway. People just want to be part of the conversation with games when games come out. And uh, that's going to continue to happen.
So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Regardless, I'm still excited about the game. I'm really, really excited to see what they, they do. Battlefield games look gorgeous. They are some of the best looking games on the market, but I want to hear what you think. By the way, don't forget we are raising money for St. Jude Children's Hospital. $10 will buy a toy for the winning area. $250 will get a family meal card and $500 will do a bone marrow transplant. Let's see where we're at. I haven't looked yet. Ooh, we hit 2,000. We're at 2,035. Thank you to everybody who has donated to help get us there. I'm really excited. I think we're going to hit 5,000 by the end of the month. We are right on pace. Uh, I set the right goal. If we keep going at this pace, we're going to be we're going to be golden. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to sign off for this video. If you like these sort of videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I try and do a video every single day. I haven't missed a day since March, since whenever I started this in March daily. And uh, hopefully I can keep going. The next few videos are going to be a lot of uh, reactions to conferences or games that I'm really excited about because E3 is starting. Let's go. We start with uh, Keeley's thing tomorrow. You can watch me on IGN. You can watch me on the Xbox Showcase on IGN this Sunday. Thank you for watching my rambly late night video, though. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to become a member, memberships are turned on there in the background. Thank you to those of you who have become a member to support the channel. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you for the next one. Bye, everybody.